uh, to my guest today on the remote version of Coffee Time, uh, James Guillauchon. I saw you have on your website a, a little pronunciation. Guillauchon. Widget, I guess. I yeah. Know. Who spoke that? Who, where does that audio clip come from? That comes from like, you can like type in your name phonetically. Okay. I, I forget exactly what it, I did it so long ago. I just had so many issues when I gave talks back in academia where people just absolutely butcher my name and I was trying to make it a little bit less butchery. Frat's it record my big camera. <laughs> okay. how, how long have you been out of academia? So um, I got my job uh, in October of 2018. So it's almost two years now. A year um, and a half, almost two years, yeah. Yeah, I did the Insight program. I, I had mentioned this um, when I went to AAS. The Insight program was kind of like hit and miss for me. I didn't that's that's my next question. Is what, what's, your, what's your hot take on it? What's your review? Yeah, I think it wasn't, um, wasn't bad. There's lots of common sense stuff you learn. Um, I think, you know, the... The main advantage you have is connections to the people in your cohort. Um, and in principle, they might help you further down the line, get the next job, um, or you know, they're just someone you can talk to if you wanted like some advice about some situation that you're in. Many of the things that you learn about like resume building and how to do interviews and stuff is, it's something that can be done on your own. It, it's, if you're self-guided, you may not do it perfectly, but it's something you can do on your own. So it's not like some unique, thing that they're doing um, and the other thing is that they're not really teaching you like how to be a data scientist they're really just teaching you like how to present yourself and they're really trying to like untrain a lot of like the bad science habits scientist habits um, <laughs> is kind of their it's like a boot untraining camp in a way yeah I don't know I there's a lot of clones out there that are not they're not all exactly the same as insight in terms of like what they do I think if someone is in a position like me, like a postdoc looking to make the jump, it probably makes sense to shop around. Like, look at those other ones that are out there, um, mm. and you know, uh, think about whether those might be better for you. I see, you know, your resume and the things that I knew about your astro career. So, I mean, like, I was, you know, I heard your name first with uh, Vox Charta. Mm. Um, is how I is how I knew about you. Um, so, but I always sort of perceived you as being very like algorithm, very data science-y already in the astral world. Um, do you think, you know, looking back, hindsight, 2020, do you, do you think like this kind of jump was always kind of in the cards for you? Do you think you had set yourself up long before or was this, was this a big shift for you to decide I'm going to leave the academic path. I'm going to go into this uh, technical, technical side. So, um, in grad school, like most of what I did was hydrodynamical simulations, like 3D simulations of supernovae and tidal disruption events um, using a fluid, fluid dynamics code called FLASH written in Fortran. Um, I, I knew like when I was working on that, that, hey, this is a skill that is not transferable to most anywhere. Um, <laughs> and uh, in, when I started my postdoc, I made a conscious effort to shift myself more into the data analysis, data science, model building kind of space. I both, both because I thought it would help my academic uh, prospects and because I thought it would be better for an industry job to have just like more exposure. I made this kind of conscious effort to shift like what I was working on to be a little bit more, um, I thought, transferable to the real world. Now in the end, in, uh, I do use physics occasionally from time to time in my job, just as like a sanity check, I'd say. Sure. Like, I, I know like how to do unit analysis and, uh, sure. and order of magnitude calculations in my head, which I think is pretty useful sometimes when you're just trying to solve something quickly. I think that's my only actual skill. Like when I boil it down, like I know some facts about things, but I think the only actual skill that I have is like, I can quickly come up with not a great answer to that question. <laughs> It's like kind of Fermi problem solving. A lot of people, they, it feels like BS to them because, you know, you're just kind of like, you like sit there and you think for a second and you just spit out a number. Right. Out of your head. And they're like, well, how did you come up with that? And, you know, it's, and then you're like, well, it's probably only accurate to an order of magnitude. Right. <laughs> and then they're not impressed. They're like, oh, that doesn't sound very accurate to me. Uh, so... <laughs> So I think, you know, it's like one of those things though, like when you're not talking to someone, it's just useful like when you're 
coding up a solution to something just right. to like have like an idea of like this is you know on this time scale versus that time scale and it just right. kind of helps you think i think about that kind of thing can i ask you like one more question which you don't have to answer you can answer any way you like um why did you leave leave academia did you run out of options or were you or before that point were you like i'm not happy what you know did you leave it or did it leave you i think it's a mixture of the two like um i applied fairly broadly my first like faculty job cycle um many places where i was just like i probably won't be happy at this place but let's just apply see like what happens um and I got pickier as time went on. I was just like, no, I'm not going to waste my time applying to this place that I, I absolutely know will not work for me. Um, Roughly how many cycles did you apply? How many years? Four cycles. Four. So, yeah. So it was like, I was, yeah, I mean, in total, I submitted probably 50 or 60 applications. Um, I know people who submitted close to 100 and, yeah. you know, ended up not getting anything that they wanted. Um, and you know, at some point, I was just like, okay, this is really banging my head against the wall. Um, and particularly, like, some years, even, like, the my top choice of all the choices, I was like, this is this is actually kind of a trade-off. Like, I'm not really sure I'd be totally happy at this place either. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I was always kind of doubtful, like, in the, in the process. Um, and at least for me, I knew that if I did that, like, if I became faculty, I would, to be satisfied with like the level of work I was doing, I would have to be working at least 60 hours a week, if not more. Um, and at some point I just like, nah, I don't really want to kill myself to, to be happy. Um, sure. So, yeah, I mean, like my work, I work like 40 to 45 hours a week. The only exceptions are uh, when I was traveling out to the customer site, there's nothing really else to do. Um, we could be working like 10 or 12 hour days, but it was just like, you know, a couple weeks out of the year that you'd have to mm -hmm. do that. I, I see you still on astronomy Twitter too. I feel like you're still pretty active there. Yeah. You know, I think like it really brings me like a lot of happiness to help people out who are thinking about the transition. I think there's, there are a few of us who have made the, you know, conscientious effort to continue to remain in contact with, the astronomy community. Um, many people fall off the face of the earth. You know, they just say like, oh, screw this and they just go away, um, which is fine. It's totally their um, right to do that. Um, but it does give me enjoyment to, you know, talk to people and uh, help them out if they're, you know, thinking about making a uh, change of careers because I've gone through that process. People are still emailing me like, you know, six months, maybe up to a year after I left the field, but really just like completely died once people understood that, you know, I was no longer like active in the field. Um, right. And that's fine because I don't want to like answer random emails anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, it's just like really the kind of the memory is extremely short of like people mm -hmm. who were once in the field. And I remember like reading many great papers in my subfield where it's like, oh, what happened to that guy, you know, who wrote this paper on, you know, this like really great paper that I really like, and I just can't find any trace of them, right? They're right. probably not on social media, it's like older generations, but um, mm -hmm. I, I just find it really fascinating that, you know, there's just kind of these um, dead end threads of thought because these people just uh, take all of their uh, knowledge capital with them when they go, you know, uh, leave uh, the field. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just like, it brings me like a lot of pleasure to, to maintain that connection, at least for now. Um, right. I have noticed like my interest is like declining a little bit like year after year. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it'll ever go straight to zero. You're somebody who's created web services and, and like websites that have lasted years. Um, but like when I click on your website, astrocrash.net, uh, it, it too is like effectively a relic of your academic time yeah. and you haven't updated it uh, since you've come into the, to the, to the industry side, to the real world. And, and I've noticed that's also something that, um, you know, people's GitHubs will sometimes still be active depending on what they're doing. Like not only do the papers go away, but like the last website, the last version of the website is like, I'm a postdoc or whatever. And like, and that's, that also, pe people don't seem to maintain that, like that sense of, uh, advertisement, I guess. I maintain 
like a coherent like story about yourself right yeah. like on, it's kind of easier in academia it's like oh you know i did this project and this project and they all relate to the universe in this like grand you know way um <laughs> and it, it's harder to build like kind of a coherent story of oneself uh which is why it's kind of hard to write a resume um when you're going mm -hmm. from academia into industries that you know here's everything that i was and now i'm doing something completely different and right. you know, kind of like make that um coherent yeah i don't know it's a lot of work to like like there's so much image building in astronomy like in terms yeah. of like manicuring yourself to uh to be presentable in various ways um <laughs> and uh, you know web website is part of that but yeah uh, yeah so you know i i think part part of like the, the nice thing about not being in the field anymore is that i don't have to give a damn about that anymore <laughs> <laughs> um I can just be myself, um, which is which is really kind of refreshing. So I mean, so again, I said I, I knew your work from Vox, Car Vox Carta, Vox Charta. It's Carta. It was actually Vox in Carta. A, it was it was an Italian um, grad student at um, Santa Cruz who came up with the name because uh, okay. I asked him for like, can you can you give me like a Latin name that means like paper talk? And okay. He uh, that's the name he came up with uh, okay that's michele fuma gali he's i think a professor in italy uh now at okay. the university uh, anyway that's where the name comes from i mean we used it in grad school for our i mean like everybody else for their coffee discussions I, I think it's one of the it's like it is the only i think i will go on record as saying i think it's the only successful astro ph rapper there's been many things you know blogs and hosts and you know whatever people who have re reconstituted the astro ph content for various reasons and i think vox carta is the only one that like has widespread pickup in it and i think it's still beloved so i think it's a great service and you know if you're trickling your interest still just at the 0.1 percent of like effort it i feel like it's still being used maybe the numbers don't support it but i feel like it's still a killer service there are some people who use it i i kind of feel like it's pretty flat it probably has some decline i haven't really okay. paid too much attention to it um the, the hilarious thing is that like 2009 is when I made it and I worked on it like pretty hard, like to get it functional for like, I want to say like a year. And then at some wow. point I was like, look, I got to be doing science. Like this is not helping my, <laughs> right. you know, my case for like getting postdocs and stuff. Right. So I made it another effort to like, just like, Hey, I'm just going to kind of maintain it, but not do anything new. And I literally did nothing to it. Like the only thing I did was just like, make sure it was up. And if there's like a, some error, I would fix it. But I right. I like feature froze it essentially, um, you know, in my third or fourth year of grad school. Um, and I think astronomers really love using tools that never change. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the fact that it never actually evolved beyond what it was, I think was comforting to people. Like, yeah. And like now it has like slightly old web 2.0 kind of, yeah. you know, like it, it looks just a little out of date, which is very comforting right. to us. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like the, the the uproar of like ADS switching. Yeah, into, right, exactly. Um, you know, format, and it's just like, it's, it's hilarious to me. Do you look back fondly as, do you, do you consider yourself a lifetime astronomer? Do you look, do you think that was a good path for James long-term? I think like, I, the PhD, zero regrets. Like I think that was, I would do that again in a heartbeat. Like that was a great experience. Um, I, you know, had a lot of freedom. I had an advisor I really liked. Um, and uh, postdoc was fine the first couple years, but I did think that, you know, per particularly when I reevaluated around year four or five, I was like, eh, I probably should have tried mm. to exit a little bit earlier. There was just a slight regret in like, kind of like not using that, you know, maybe two years that I was really not being very happy to do something else. Um, sure. And so that, you know, that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like the experience is great for the PhD and, in the postdoc, I did have some time to try like new stuff and broaden my skill set, but I stopped really growing as like a, uh, both as a person and technically like kind of after the first couple of years of switching sure. over to different things. James, I really appreciate your candor and your, uh, your willingness to share your journey. I'm sure you've given this spiel to people a lot. And so I appreciate you giving it to me and, and hopefully to my, my YouTube audience. That worked out at least. Yeah. See? The whole grand plan is working. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. I'll talk to you later, man. All right, man. See you later.
Thank you.